Pulitzer Prize winning Miami based photographer Brian Smith is a fascinating person. For the past 30 years, his iconic portraits of famous celebrities, athletes, and executives have been used in advertising and have graced the covers and pages of hundreds of magazines, including Sports Illustrated, ESPN the Magazine, Time, Forbes, New York Times Magazine, L, and British GQ. His first magazine photograph appeared in Life magazine when he was a 20-year-old student at the University of Missouri. Then five years later, Brian won the Pulitzer Prize for spot news photography for his photographs of the Los Angeles Olympic Games. In this interview, Brian and I sit down at the 2014 Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas to discuss his appointment to the elite Sony Artisan of Imagery program, as well as how he likes shooting with Sony's new flagship mirrorless camera, the A7R. Okay, here I am with Brian. He's uh, he's one of the Sony artisans, and I want to find out first of all what an artisan is. And uh, we're going to talk about this mirrorless camera you have in your hands. Yes. <laughs> and you're going to try not to let me walk away with it. So what's, what's I, a Sony? I do I do have a like strong wrist strap. It just doesn't matter. Case, so. it doesn't matter. <laughs> So what's a Sony Artisan? What does that mean? Um, well, there's eight of us. We're the brand ambassadors for Sony cameras. And one of the really cool things about it is we get the gear and a chance to like test it out under fire and That's put it through cool. all its paces and, and give them feedback in terms of what they should work on next. Do you get the stuff, do you get the gear, like in, in the case you're holding, this is an A7R that he has here. Is this, do you get this before it gets released to the general public? Uh, this was this was the rare instance where I actually got a camera two weeks before it was announced. Okay, okay. So like a lot of times they're actually fairly secretive with us. We know we know something's coming. We don't really know the details. Yeah. Uh, You're like, get this your was catches a big camera. ready. All, all I knew is this was gonna be big because when I kind of hinted at what I thought it would be, I'd saw huge smiles on their faces. Yeah. So uh, they're like, I, you're gonna love it. Don't yeah, worry. Exactly. We're gonna, yeah, and, yeah. You know, I've, I've come to learn over the years that um, when my Sony peeps are excited, it's a good thing. Now, how long have you been an artisan? Uh, they a launched Sony the, artisan. <laughs> yeah, they, they launched the program in 2008 with the launch of the Alpha 900. Okay. So I've uh, been shooting with the gear ever since then. Wow. Okay, so let's just switch into this guy, the, Sony, okay. the A7. You're one of the few pros that I've had a chance to, to speak to that I think maybe the only pro that I've had a chance to speak to that's actually had one of these cameras for a while and used it for revenue generating yeah. work. Yeah. How is it? Like going from a larger DSLR, like with the translucent mirror and all that, to this guy, is it, I mean, are there any compromises, pluses, minuses? Well, I think I think the, the great thing to look at is, to me, a camera really boils down to a sensor and a lens. Right. So it's, the A7 has the same sensor from the, uh, Alpha 99, the Alpha 7R actually takes it up a step with the 36 megapixel sensor with no anti-aliasing filter. Yeah. And this is, uh, I was blown away when I saw images from this because we made, actually for the Museum of Natural History, we made four by six foot prints. And the detail even at four by six foot is amazing. Oh, it's wow. like, you know, you- Four by six feet. By four by six feet. Jeez. So, wow. Okay, so so you're not losing anything with, and what kind of things are you shooting? So I want to yeah. When, so so I think the perfect time to shoot with this is when you're when you're walking around street photography, photojournalism, mm -hmm. uh, travel photography, because where key. you want something and you want something lighter. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, it it causes uh, attracts less attention than mm -hmm. a big DSLR body, yeah. but it's also lighter to walk around with a kid over your shoulder that doesn't weigh you down. Right. So I think that's the perfect situation. So much of what I shoot is uh, probably 90% of what I shoot portraiture is with the 24 to 70. Yeah. And they're just now this this um, the end of this month releasing a 24 70 f4 Zeiss lens for this, which That's that cool. coupled with this 55 1.8 would give me really everything I want and for one, most day to day. One shoots. little body, so the yeah. so the 24 to 70 is your go to lens. That's absolutely go to, and then okay. I want something fast to go with that. So. Yeah. 5518 is a great choice for that. Mm -hmm. But the other thing that's great about this camera, this is kind of what pros have been dreaming about for years of being able to shoot with any brand of lens right. on a full frame camera. Right. And now in a, you know, it, it's small to boot, which is great, but the fact is, you know, if you've got some like a, uh, rangefinder lenses that have been gathering dust. Yep. You can shoot with those the way they were intended. Like, right. you know, it's been great with the APS 
mirrorless cameras like mm -hmm. NEX to yeah. be able to shoot with those. But you know, when a 35 millimeter becomes a 50 or a 24 becomes a 35, it's not yeah. quite the same. Now it's like if you shoot with a 24, you're shooting with a 24. So I've shot with a, a lot of my rangefinder glass that I had sitting around. I um, also still had a few Canon lenses that I didn't sell, That's like cool. the 85 1.2 and, yeah. and the 50 1.2 that, uh, you know, just are cool for a different look. So I've kind of mixed, mixed things up. And then, of course, all the alpha lenses with the uh, alpha adapters as well. So That's really cool. that whole arsenal of lenses to w work with. Do you find that when you're on jobs and the client is there on the job and they see a smaller camera like this, is there a stigma of, well, where's your big giant, yeah. where's the white lens, where's okay, all okay. this magic? So, so guys, if you want to know the trick to this, is what you do is you get all your gear and you have a table set up and you spread all your gear out on there, which, which actually we did on one shoot like where we had everything like, you know, you know, the, all the 20 lenses that I work with and shoot with, which I really have. Yeah. And, you know, by that point, they're not even noticing that the body's smaller. Right. Uh, the other thing, too, it's like on like a big shoot where I'm tethering and, you know, I want to have batteries at the disposal. That's an instance where I'll put the vertical grip on this, which, okay. you know, brings up the form factor. It also makes it easier when I'm doing portrait photography because it adds the, the vertical release. So mm -hmm. if I'm shooting like this all day, I love having that uh, vertical grip. So, by virtue of the fact that you that you need the diversion table, yes, does that mean that there's still that stigma in the pro space it's, of people I, I, like you know? Well, I think it's because like one, your work stands stands on it. Oh, who cares? Like, yeah. if you showed it with an iPhone, they should be okay. It's Brian. He's got an iPhone. You know. Yeah. Um, well, I, I have not shot jobs on the iPhone, so <laughs> just we'll get that clear. Have. Yeah. Some yeah. Have. Um, but. Um, no, I think some somewhat it's like a lot of times I'm I'm gonna reach for one of those lenses where suddenly we go, wow, this would really look cool with a 300. So we have the thing sitting out there yeah. anyway, but um, I think people are more and more accepting. And and actually, what was interesting on the shoot was the clients were were I think they were more fascinated with the camera than they were with me, which is always great. Like I want them like to fixate on the gear and uh, you yeah. know. It's gotten a, it's got a tremendous buzz, which a lot of people are already familiar with. So it's yeah. great to be shooting with it, and the results speak for themselves. It's like it's just really, really high quality. Uh, right. You know, it seems like there's nothing because they removed the low pass filter on this. It seems like there's nothing really clouding the look between, between you, you and, and the subject. I yeah. love that. Which is a portrait photographer, what you want? You right. want to you want to capture them, not you know. Yeah, and, or not have a lot of layers of gunk between exactly. you and your subject. Exactly. Yeah. Do you think you think 2014, 2015 is the year of less is more? Like I see that as a trend, you know, things are just downsizing, getting yeah, smaller, I mean, phones, absolute, everything. You know? I, I think absolutely. People are used to that, you know, I mean, when you look at how, you know, cell phones have kind of taken that niche market over, mm -hmm. there's no reason that these cameras have to be big. Actually, when you think about it, you know, our, our old film cameras were a lot smaller than some of the big DSLRs of today. And there's really no reason that they became that yeah. large and cumbersome. Yeah. So I think getting back to a smaller factor and, you know, to me, I still, I still have my Alpha 99, but suddenly, you know, this is the equivalent of the rangefinder for me, you know, where yeah. you used to have the big SLR body and maybe a Leica to go with it. Yeah. It's like, you know, you've got different tools for different jobs. Yeah. Yeah. So in closing, so the tips for people that are shooting with smaller cameras, like just sort of ideas of, okay, how they can manage the shoot a little better. Like, you know, when you go out, or better, is a better way okay. to phrase this. When you go out on a shoot and your, your bag is ready the night before and you get ready to, you know, go, you've got the, the shot concepted in your head and all that. Give us some tips on how, when I step, step on a set with a model or, or a subject, how I can get the shot. You know, like, is it is it about rapport building? Is it about comfort with my gear it, or all the above? Which yeah, well, the two go together because mm -hmm. what you want to be is really comfortable with the gear where you know where all the settings are, what's everything in the menu. Yeah. So when the subject arrives, it's all about the rapport between the two of you and an interaction yep. where it's like, 
the, the best compliment that I've ever am ever given at the end of the shoot is when somebody goes like, wow, I thought this would be tough. It's really great. It didn't even feel like we were doing a photo shoot. Yeah. And that's that's what you want to strive for. You want to have it like a conversation between friends. So if you know everything the camera can do, it's just an extension of your vision. How do you get to that point though? How do you get to the point? Is it just mileage on your shutter finger? A absolutely. You, okay. shoot, you shoot a lot um, when you get a new gear and, and one of the things that goes with this is we get lots of pieces of new gear. You want to figure out what it can do, yeah. um, you know, what it's really capable with. It's like a, a lot of times try to push the envelope and with a, a camera that's meant more for, you know, studio or landscape, I want to see what it will do with action. Yep. Uh, you know, just figure out everything the camera will do for you. So when you get in the middle of a shoot, it's all about you and the subject. Yeah, yeah get this out of the way. It just exactly. Becomes, yeah. yeah. So I know we're, we're sitting at CES at Sony's booth here, so we're kind of in the nexus of Sony's yeah, yes. love here, uh, but I'm going to put you on the spot. And okay. you're a Sony artisan. What's missing from this camera? Like, what do you, uh, what do you well, want? no, no, it's obviously the thing that, you know, is still in the works mm -hmm. and is coming is more lenses. I, right. I think, right. you know, the camera was a, was a big hit. They rolled it out with uh, uh, four lenses initially with the... Uh, uh, 24 to 7 of being the fourth of them. Yep. There'll be a 70 to 200 f4 coming in in a, about a month after that. Yeah. But you know, I'm still asking for a fast prime um, uh, portrait lens, something yep. like an 85, and a fast wide prime. You know, 24, 28. Uh, you know, in the meantime, th there's lots of alternatives with third-party lenses and adapters. Yep. But you know. I'm looking Native. forward to getting more of this FE uh, Zeiss glass. All right, so where, uh, you know, you've got a bunch of projects going on, I'm sure. You're always traveling the world and all that. What's the next big thing that's coming up in front? Well, actually, the big thing that I've got, and I'm under the gun for right now, trying to wrap up this week, is a camera guide on this, this camera. So I've been shooting a lot with it, and we're doing I for Beach Pit. <laughs> for oh, Beach Pit, we're doing a camera guide, the Sony A7, A7R from cool. snapshots to great shots. Nice. So uh, if my editor's listening, I swear to God, I'm Ted. working on it right now. <laughs> Is it Ted? We'll have it out now. <laughs> it's not no, Ted. No, it's okay. Val. So okay. <laughs> Val, I'm working on it. We'll get this thing out. Um, Give cut him some slack. Look what's going on. Come on. Yeah. All right, where can people go to see more of your work and be inspired by Brian? Uh, my website's briansmith.com. We also have a list of all the books on there, uh, uh, along with the blog. Any that people can follow along and then on Twitter at Brian Smith Photo. Awesome. Brian Smith, thank you for thank sitting you. down in the middle of all this yeah. chaos to talk to me. I'm Frederick Van Johnson. We'll see you in the next one. Thank you.